My name is Victor Abrich. I'm a first year cardiology fellow at the Mayo Clinic in Arizona. My research project that I did in residency titled Risk Factors for Recurrent Spontaneous Epistaxis will be appearing in an upcoming issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. We investigated over 50 potential risk factors for recurrent nosebleeds that were severe enough for patients to seek medical care. We found that risk factors for isolated nosebleeds such as sinusitis or deviated septum did not increase the risk of recurrence. However, congestive heart failure, hypertension, and diabetes did have this increased risk. We also looked at several medications that cause increased bleeding in general. We found that warfarin was the only one that was associated with an increased risk of recurrent nosebleeds. Interestingly, the majority of these patients were subtherapeutic with regards to their anticoagulation. We also saw that within the month of the first nosebleed, there was a very low event rate of people having strokes or heart attacks. Congestive heart failure is actually an underrepresented risk factor for epistaxis in general, but here we found that it's in fact a risk factor for recurrence. Also, hypertension and diabetes can cause increased risk for nosebleeds through the development of atherosclerosis in the nasal vessels, which makes them weak and more prone to bleed. Physicians can counsel their patients with congestive heart failure, hypertension, or diabetes on their increased risk of having recurrent nosebleeds, especially if they're on blood thinners. Patients should be encouraged to continue taking these medications despite their increased risk of bleeding in order to prevent heart attacks and strokes. Patients are certainly at an increased risk of having recurrent nosebleeds, especially on warfarin as compared to any other medication. Fortunately, those patients with cardiovascular disease have a very low risk of developing a heart attack or a stroke following a major nosebleed. It would be interesting to study medication adherence in patients who do suffer from a severe nosebleed in order to see if their behavior correlates with the low risk of suffering from a heart attack or stroke within a month of having the nosebleed. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.com. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.